Welcome to UAB MedCast, a continuing education podcast for medical professionals, providing knowledge that is moving medicine forward. Here's Melanie Cole. Welcome to UAB MedCast. I'm Melanie Cole, and joining me today to highlight the robotic procedure coronary artery bypass grafting is Dr. Sasha Still. She's an assistant professor in the Division of Cardiothoracic Surgery at UAB Medicine. Dr. Still, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we get into the topic, can you tell us a little bit about your experience and interest in cabbage and specifically mid-cab? Thanks for having me so I can talk about this special procedure. I'm an assistant professor at cardiac surgery here at UAB. I also, in addition to robotic cabbages, I perform a large breadth of cardiac surgical procedures from aortic surgery, complex valve surgery, but off-pump coronary bypass grafting is near and dear to my heart. And impetus towards starting a robotic cabbage program is really it has to do with the fact that University of Alabama at Birmingham is one of the busiest, if not the busiest, beating heart coronary bypass program in the country. I mean, maybe even in the world. Training here and then practicing here has led me to acquire significant expertise in beating heart surgery, otherwise known as off-pump cabbage. The vast majority of cabbage procedures I perform are on a beating heart. I'd say 99% of them. I believe this method of surgical revascularization leads to less blood loss, shorter hospital stay, less transfusions. I think patients do exceptionally well, which compels me to continue and use this technique. And furthermore, take it to the next level and start doing robotic-assisted cabbage, or otherwise known as mid-cab, which is also known as minimally invasive direct cabbage. It gets confusing, but anytime we talk about robotic cabbage, we'll be talking about a robotic-assisted left internal mammary artery to left anterior descending artery bypass grafting. Thank you for that. So how does, as we look at the evolution of robotic technology, how has that impacted the traditional approach to cabbage and specifically, as you said, left internal mammary artery to left anterior descending artery and mid cab? Tell us how that evolution has impacted and why you're so excited about this. So first, let's talk about some just basic fundamentals of coronary artery bypass grafting. Surgical revascularization via cabbage treats coronary disease by bypassing a blockage in an artery that restores blood flow past the area of the blockage. This is done with either arteries or veins, specifically uh, one of the internal mammary arteries, sometimes a radial artery from the arm or saphenous vein graft from the leg. In the most, in the simplest sense, robotic assisted cabbage allows a bypass to be formed through small incisions rather than a sternotomy. I robotically harvest the left internal mammary artery down the side of the chest. And then after that's completed, patients heparinized and through approximately a four centimeter incision in the front of the left chest, I perform the bypass on a beating heart. This compared to traditional cabbage is obviously much less invasive. Traditional cabbage is via a sternotomy incision, which entails a large linear cut through the front of the chest, which requires also sawing open the sternum and closing it. A minimally invasive cabbage, I go through the ribs. Mid-cab or robotic-assisted lemma to LED bypass, it doesn't necessarily impact traditional cabbage. And what I mean by that is that it rather serves as a useful adjunct in the field of coronary surgery. So what we know is that a lot of people come in with complex multivessel disease, and those patients should be treated with traditional bypass techniques through a standard sternotomy. Because the studies have shown thus far is that in complex coronary disease, surgery fares better than PCI meaning complete revascularization of all the vessels in the heart has been shown to have better outcomes. Now, similarly, less complex single-vessel coronary artery disease can be better served with PCI rather than opening the chest just to you know hit one vessel. Now, mid-cab or the robotic-assisted cabbage bridges this gap, okay? Patients with coronary disease with intermediate complexity also can achieve long-term benefit from a surgical limit LED in addition to well-placed stents. This is called hybrid revascularization. So mid-cab overall is not any type of replacement for traditional cabbage, but offers patients a long-term benefit that wasn't previously offered by stenting the LAD alone. One of the interesting things, and you touched on it in your first answer, is the cutting edge aspect is that it's infrequently done in the United States. Due to its technical difficulty, how much, doctor, does the experience of the surgeon matter for this type of procedure, training, experience? Speak a little bit about that and the learning curves involved. 
without a doubt, this is a technically challenging procedure. And there are two complex aspects to mid-cap. Uh, one is that the surgeon requires off-pump cabbage expertise. So you have to be used to sewing with very fine suture on a beating heart to perform very important aspects of the most important aspects of the procedure, meaning the bypass grafting. Um, in addition to that, you need robotic experience. Now, personally, I think a surgeon needs greater than 100 off-pump cabbages under his or her belt to safely attempt mid-cap. And the reason I say that is because you do not have the same exposure, and so you need to be facile with dealing with difficulties that may arise quickly, safely, expeditiously through a very small incision. Strong fundamentals in off-pump cabbage allow for your increased patience, which of course is absolutely necessary anytime that you're going to pushing the forefront and trying new things for yourself, for your skills and your patients. So that increased patience is necessary to perform, again, the most important part of the cabbage procedure, which is a lima to LAD anastomosis. Robotic training and practice is also important. Now, all types of surgeons in all different fields are learning the robot every day, and that just gets used to sitting on the robot, understanding how it functions, where the arms work, what patients to do it in, what, what patients not. And definitely my robotic training, both as a general surgery resident and as a fellow, allowed me the basics to move forward with robotic surgery as assistant professor. I'd like you to expand a little bit on patient factors and criteria. Describe the parameters, Dr. Still, that would indicate a patient would be a candidate. You mentioned single vessel versus multiple. Speak about why you would do this and who it may be contraindicated for. So surgical candidacy, let's do a little quick comparison. So surgical candidacy for traditional cabbage means that the benefits have to outweigh the risks for surgery, just like any other surgery. Generally speaking, patient has to have reasonable functional status, graftable coronary disease. So I would like to think and know that my graft is going to last a long time. There's got to be an acceptable conduit, so good arteries, good veins. And the art of surgery, the art of medicine, has to have a clear benefit of survival or quality of life, even in the setting of high-risk surgery. Now, this is different for robotic-assisted bypass. The criteria for me personally, and for I'm sure many others, are is different and more stringent. And this is because of the specific technical factors that are necessary to perform the operation successfully because it's more difficult. So one of these is the appropriate body type and size for the robot. So this is individualized. I make the decision actually after seeing the patient, putting my hands on him or her to understand where everything lies because sometimes the robot just will not function in certain people based on shoulder height, et cetera. Ideally, the patients are less than 110 kilograms. Now, ever since I began doing robotic coronary, I've been increasing the weight limit over time because as we've continued to get more experience, we understand where the robot should be and how to be successful in individuals that are larger because of adipose or larger because of muscular structure. Now, in addition to that, patients have to have an acceptable lung function. They have to require one lung ventilation, meaning I have to drop a lung to perform the surgery. If they're not going, to, if their oxygenation is going to be bad, carbon dioxide starts trending up, I'm going to have to do it through a sternotomy. Not having any prior heart or lung surgeries also is benefit. Now, because I'm looking to have the most perfect cohort I can in terms of my robotic cabbages, I have not tried a redo or anyone with, a, with prior lung surgery because of the adhesions in place, and that makes the surgery much more difficult. In addition to that, I like it. I get a CTA chest on everyone beforehand so that I can assess the left internal mammary artery. This is, can also be done through left heart cath. And then in terms of based on their disease, who is an appropriate candidate, isolated proximal LAD disease is the best. And I say that because the longer the distal segment of LAD that I know that I can bypass just allows me kind of comfort in the surgery because if there is a mid-LAD lesion, it means I'm going to have to go more distal. And so it just, it's a little bit more difficult in determining where to go on the heart. In the setting of multivessel coronary disease, we are performing hybrid coronary revascularization, meaning the patient will get a PCI and then three months to six months later, a mid-cab or they get a mid-cab up front and then we PCI later. That is a decision made in conjunction with the cardiologist that's taking care of the patient. We want to ensure that all of our you know, hybrid revasc cases are very successful. And so this is like a tailored decision-making process through a heart team approach. This is such an interesting topic. Dr. Still, what role do interdisciplinary collaborations play for optimizing these outcomes for these patients undergoing robotic-assisted mid-cap? 
collaboration with other physicians is really central to appropriate patient selection. And that's what is going to allow this surgery to take on and to move forward, not just in the state of Alabama, but also nationally and in the world, because perfect outcomes, good outcomes, you know, I say acceptable, but my goal is always perfection, is what is going to allow us to continue to do this. Doctors still looking ahead. What potential developments or innovations do you foresee in the field of robotic assisted cardiac surgery? What excites you down the line? Give us a little blueprint for further research. Robotic assisted cardiac surgery is a hot topic. Here at UAB, we perform a wide breadth of robotic mitral procedures, robotic tricuspid procedures, now robotic coronary bypass grafting. There really is constant innovation in terms of how to perform these surgeries better, how to expedite the patient's recovery process, even in the setting of minimally invasive surgery, which is also an expedited recovery process compared to traditional cardiac surgery through a standard sternotomy. And additionally, there is now a somewhat of a push, at least I've seen, to try to figure out how to train people as they are training to be cardiac surgeons to perform minimally invasive operations. We're in a exciting area of the field right now. And I guess the next stop in terms of robotic-assisted coronary bypass grafting is proceeding to a potential TCAB or a total endoscopic coronary artery bypass grafting program kind of depends on, you know, where you feel your niche is, because really even in the entire setting of minimally invasive cardiac surgery, there's really a place for everyone. So for now, for me personally, I want to do exceptionally well at robotic assisted Lima to LAD. And then after I find that the patients are doing well, have good long-term outcomes, because in the short term, they're doing fantastic. But at the long term, they're still continuing to do fantastic. Then I will consider branching out into additional robotic, maybe more bypass in a robotic cabbage. Thank you so much, Dr. Still, for sharing your incredible expertise. It's really an exciting time in your field. Things are moving very quickly. And thank you for sharing the technicalities of this procedure with us. And for more information, please visit our website at uabmedicine.org slash physician. That concludes this episode of UAB MedCast. I'm Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for joining us today.